Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome to another Toby Hooper review. And this time it's a personal favorite of mine. I will honestly say this is one of my favorite Toby Hooper films. And really want to say my favorite Toby Hooper film only because is it technically better than Chainsaw Master? No, but I'm one of those type of guys that when a film is universally hated and I'm one of the few people who like it in this weird almost rebellious way it makes me like the film even more I've always been like that ever since I was young just okay everyone hates this film oh well I still love it and you know what it makes me love it anymore and I don't know how to describe it other than that I mean granted there are films that many people like that I truly enjoy and then there's the opposite it just my own unique, whether you call it good, bad, that's subjective, but my own unique taste. And I also draw more towards films that don't get talked about a lot. That doesn't mean I don't like a good classic. I mean, John Carver's The Thane is my favorite horror film of all time. One of my favorite horror films ever is The Blob from 1988, but that's a film that doesn't get talked about much, and that deserves more. Jacob's Ladder. Looking at the poster here, that deserves a lot more love. So yeah, while this is not a perfect movie, it's absurd. Absolutely. But I've always enjoyed this movie. I always have. And that is The Mangler. Enough that yes, I did buy the Blu-ray from overseas, which you do need a region-free Blu-ray player. Because A, I doubt this film will ever get a Blu-ray release in the U.S. B, they had a different covers and I like this cover Robin England the other half is the machinery I love the feel of it the steel book there is a booklet inside but it's all in I believe it's German so I can't tell anything but it's got some nice pictures in there and when you watch the blu-ray it is the uncut version that was only on the VHS tape the uncut version was never put on DVD because no one likes the film. But yeah, there's a Blu-ray and DVD copy. The DVD copy has the normal version, while the Blu-ray has about four minutes of new footage, some extra gore put in there. And you could tell when those scenes pop in, you see a little bit less in video quality. That you could tell is of a little bit lesser quality, but I was fine with it. It's one of those things where I probably would have done it myself. Find the the DVD quality of the film and then try to put in my own from that VHS version, but this did it for me. So I like that. If you want the uncut version of The Mangler and you either find a VHS version of the film online or on this Blu-ray this disc right here. Now I remember first hearing about this movie back in it was around 95 when this came out because I remember seeing the trailer a lot for this movie. It was I want to say on the VHS of In the Mouth of Madness? I could be wrong but I believe it was New Line Cinema at the time that released this so I keep wanting to say In the Mouth of Madness I was going to say Mortal Kombat, but I'm like, that's a PG-13 film. I'm not sure if they put trailers for R-rated movies on there, on a PG-13 film. But I can't remember. It might be in the mouth of madness because I was around the same time. I always loved the trailer. I thought the trailer was well done. I loved the music in the trailer. I thought it was, I liked how it built up. The Three Masters of Horror, Robert E. Nguyen, Stephen King, and Toby Hooper, The Mangler. And yes, it's based on a Stephen King story, which I've never read. And, like I said, the plot, is it absurd? Hell yeah, it's a fucking... And it's, uh, it takes place as this blue ribbon laundromat, and you have this laundry machine from hell, like if Satan does his laundry, it's on this fuck-off machine. I, I love it. 
I love the look of it. This is like that's a great looking prop. And what I liked about this film is Toby Hooper, it's like they said, you know what, we know this is fucking off the rails crazy. But we want to take it seriously and go for broke. And they didn't hold back. They didn't hold back on the gore, especially if you watch the uncut version. I mean, that's the remains of a person right there. You have a couple very interesting, quirky characters. Ted Levine's character as a detective. Uh, he's one of the reasons why I enjoy the film a lot. I like Ted Levine as an actor. <coughs> I mean, whether he's playing bad guys and films like Nowhere to Run with John Claude Van Damme, of course, Silence of the Lambs is Buffalo Bill, or being the good guy and stuff like the TV show Monk. I really like Ted Levine. And I really liked his character. His character is a bit of a drunk. He has a bit of a tragic past. And the movie, in a way, is about him fighting his inner demons. I mean, even this other character says, don't let your inner demons possess you. So, you know, save yourself. This character here, the Pitcher Man. Well, that's another interesting, quirky character. Where I, I like the way the actor played it. It's like, good job, my boy. That's the first ghost I've ever seen. Right when you think you've got life, it bites you in the ass. <laughs> and then there's a moment where he's sick, and he literally sits up from this gurney and spits blood right on the camera. <laughs> it just moments like that, and the way the film looks. It's grungy. It's dirty. It's filthy. This seems like a hellish place to work at. See if I can get a good picture of it. Like, I like the way it's filmed. It's filmed dark, and I think it has some decent bit of atmosphere with the, the setting, similar to Stephen King's Graveyard Shift from 1990. Now, I would put that above this movie. Stephen King's Graveyard Shift from 1990 is one of my favorite Stephen King movies. And the short story sucks, but the movie, I think, is good. I think it's a great movie, honestly. It has a really cool monster. I think the cast worked well. Bravo, Nitsukistasich. I love Graveyard Shift, so that that be that's one of my favorites. But you know that dirty feel. So I would put that above this, but that dirty feel is felt in this movie as well. And Robert England, I don't think he half asses it. He played he had another interesting quirky character as sort of the owner of this blue ribbon mill where his legs are fucked up and when this poor old woman gets sucked into it that's like one of the first scenes of the movie right here he's just like oh hell bells Adele do something yeah I'm gonna do something I'm gonna dance you know I'm gonna do the jig <laughs> uh, he's having a lot of fun in this role while in England he's having a ball in this movie we all have to make sacrifices there's a little piece of me in the machine, and a little bit of it in me. So, uh, Ted Levine, he's a very likable character. When this guy who pretty much, I think, is his brother-in-law. And that's kind of an interesting relationship where you have a guy and the brother-in-law. Because Ted Levine's wife died for certain reasons. And usually it's, it's not the brother of the wife and him... I don't know how to describe it, but maybe a little bit decent uh, friendship they had with each other. And I thought the actor did okay. I'm not going to say he's fantastic, but I thought he was okay. He has some moments that are funny, but overall, I didn't mind him. I, I didn't mind him. And he's a little bit of a religious guy, and he, he studies himself a little bit in the occult. Pretty much he's a guy who helps with the exposition of what's going on. And I like Ted Levine's performance. I like how he reacts to, oh yeah, sure, that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. And when something is crazy, he looks shot. When something uh, is sickens him, he, he really feels it. Like this moment here, where at the beginning of the film, like I said, this poor old woman gets pulled into this thing. And in the uncut version, you see that her head gets crushed, as well as the entire body gets folded up like it was a t-shirt. And there's nothing left. So, 
they can't take her out on a gurney or a stretcher. They take her out in buckets. Yes, buckets. They literally have to put her in buckets and carry out the buckets. And you see Tel Aviv watching these people carry out these bloody buckets. It's all that's all that's left of this woman. And I, that's fucking crazy, you know, that's ballsy. Kill the, the nice old lady and turn her into nothing but what you put in a bucket. <laughs> and I think there's some fun lines of dialogue in the film. When Televine is talking with this other guy and he goes, Listen, reality, bullshit. Bullshit, reality. See this stuff you're looking at? That's bullshit. Okay? Bullshit reality. Reality bullshit. This is bullshit, Mark. This is bullshit. <laughs> and yeah, some of the, the rest of the supporting cast, they're not much run home about like this lady here. Her sometimes it seems like some of these people are dubbed. I believe this was shot in a different country. I could be wrong, because it's not like, if I was, Toby Hooper may rest in peace, if I was able to talk with him, I would have asked him all about this movie. I really would have. Where it was shot, for some reason, I keep thinking it was shot in a different country, so maybe they hired some locals, and then they had to dub it, or, because, like, her, and then, I don't know if the guy's in it, but he's sort of the foreman of the, of the, the red ribbon, I'm not sure they have a, yeah, this guy here. They sound funky, and they're not really great performers. So, you know, the some of the supporting cast are not that good. It's not like this thing's going to be the most threatening, because it's like, how the hell can it kill you unless you get near it, or someone puts you near it? At the ending, yeah, I would have changed a couple things. It's not a downbeat ending, but good doesn't really overall win. But at the same time, there's still a little bit of hope because Ted Levine at least goes off and moves and goes out into the sunset. I guess in a way, like the, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, if you think about it, where Good technically didn't win because everyone else died except the girl and she got away, but then she's crazy and Leatherface is still alive. He's dancing and the cook is still alive. Same with here where the the laundromat is still there, only there's a new owner. So it's kind of the same. So, But maybe if it was, at least there's a little bit of hope, like at least a little bit of something, like Televine him conquering his inner demons and going, you know what, I went through this situation, it's time for me to, to go on with my life, and at least with his character through this ordeal, whether he won or lost, at least there's something to that. Plus, who knows, I mean, maybe in your mind there's a sequel, he comes back with a grenade launcher and blows up the whole place. <laughs> you never know. I've seen the sequels, and that, what I just said, would have been a lot fucking better. Like, if you, if people want to say this is the worst movie ever, you never saw the sequels. I've seen the sequels. I've seen The Mangler 2 with Lance Henriksen put up on all these fucking wires as if he's a puppet. I've seen The Mangler Reborn that looked like it cost $7.83. Again, if you think this is bad, watch The Mangler 2. Watch The Mangle Were Born, and then contact me about it. I've seen those two pieces of shit. Once was enough, I am not watching those pieces of shit again. Plus, I don't have them. <laughs> so, I don't need to watch it. But this, I, I light the door when it happens. It's very bloody, especially in the uncut version that puts some stuff back in. England's death, when you actually see him get folded up and his legs get folded up. And then the finale is insane, and, and that's what I like about it. And sorry if the video fucked up, because I saw it free, so if my voice... If my voice, uh, if it doesn't sync up right, that's why. I don't know, I've been having problems. I don't think it's the webcam, it's the way it connects to the computer. This port's not working right.
but it's an old computer from like 2010. But so if my voice fucked up, I apologize. There's not much I can do about it. I just redo the video, but oh well. It's not like these are high quality productions anyway. It's just me in front of a camera talking. But yeah, I, that's another thing I love about the movie is how ape shit insane it gets. I mean, first off with it, you know, Rowdy was teared or getting killed and him being folded up, his legs being folded up into a bloody mess. Like so. I like that. I like the exorcism scene that happens and then they realize something screwed up and the one guy goes, we may be fucked. <laughs> and then, like, that's why I prefer this over some of these other movies where yeah, you have to be willing to take that chance otherwise you know, you can be scared all you want but you gotta be willing to take the chance and here it's like fuck it let's have it grow legs and chase them let's have it actually shoot fucking fireballs at them let's have it with all these things coming out that rips this one guy in half just pulls half of his body off in a bloody fashion uh, that was fun. Um, how I would have ended, I would have had him just get a, a shotgun or something that he hid somewhere and blow the shit out of it, uh, blow up the place, it ends, and then the movie ends. But, you know, that's my version. So, yeah, that... If if it had that ending, it'd be one of my favorites of all time, Stephen King wise But because of, you know, the ending, I would have... It doesn't bother me too much because, again, at least there's some over Televine's character. Because, I'll just spoil it here. When a PCU gets cut off or fed into the machine, you kind of become possessed of the power of the machine. And through the ordeal, when he comes back later to give her flowers, you realize she lost her finger during that ordeal. So the machine has influenced her like it influenced Robert England. And that's why Robert England had that dialogue, piece of, of me in the machine, piece of it in me. So now she's sort of the Robert England character. And he kind of puts the flowers down and just drives off. You can tell he's packed up and he's moving away. And at least he can live happily ever after. I like took this jump start of a situation they did on the live a life. So at least there's that. It's not like Mortuary or Gin or these other fucking movies Toby Hooper directed, which I'll get to. And I'll explain what I mean by that. And I, I'm looking at this. This is another fun scene where this, uh, I guess you call it sort of an icebox. There's a moment where people are moving it and you have this electrical charge between it and the machine so that this kind of becomes affected a little bit. And there's one moment where uh, Ted Levine and the other guy are looking at it and he just gets pissed at it and hits the top off and it literally blows its stack. I mean, it blows the stack. You have this vortex out of poltergeist and uh, that's the scene you see in the trailer. And it's another one of those scenes that I did. I'm not, it's not like I'm ignorant of the fact that this seems pretty damn funny when it's not supposed to. But I, I know that, but I'm still entertained by it. That entertains me more than the seven Sharknado movies that come out. That entertains me more than the Sci Fi Channel shit that comes out. It does. So, yeah, there's intention. There is intentional humor in this, and you can tell by the dialogue, some of the stuff that uh, Ted Levine says, but is there some unintentional stuff? Sure, but that makes it even more fun. And that's what I mean, if you don't take this absurd idea, go for it, man. I think a lot of movies don't want to go for it because then they get labeled one of the worst movies ever. There's another movie that's coming out on Blu-ray, which I want to get. I think it comes out of Halloween on Blu-ray, The Shaft, a.k.a. Down, on, on Blu-ray. That's about Killer Elevator, but they went for it. Let's suck a skateboarder in, take him to the top, and shoot his ass out. <laughs> you know, let's get the lead guy a fucking bazooka and blow up the heart of the elevator. You know, let's... 
Yeah. Let's have the elevator go on flames and go down, and the hero has to jump out of the way before getting crunched and burned by the elevator. Let's have a bunch of pregnant women, and the elevator does some stuff and makes them give birth. <laughs> How that all works, I can't remember, but I mean, I, that's what I loved about it. That's what that was really great about it, man. It, I love it. I fucking love it. I love that stuff. So uh, this, this is light, like the Shaft, aka Down, which was a remake of this crappy film called The Lift, and then a film like this. If you don't take a crazy idea, go for it, man. And there's some good practical effects. Uh, the door, I love the look of the machine itself. Yeah, I like Ted Levine. I like Robert England. The Store by Barrington Fillon. I'm not even sure what else he's done. The Store fit the film very well. The story was fine. William Hooper created the Mangler. I think he did a great job construction. It's a good looking machine. I like for a horror movie. It's a great looking site for a machine. I never took this film that seriously, but at the same time, I think it's has some some seriously good performances and some fun gore. And it's not too long of a movie. It's not like two hours or anything. I really enjoy this. I'm glad to have this on Blu-ray. It's nice to see some of the, the uncut footage put back in. and I fucking love it. I think it's a lot of fun. And it's entertaining. Um, I wish this was in English because I would love to read the behind the scenes of it. But I did at least have some nice pictures. And yeah, and overseas, I don't. It was a limited edition. That's why I wanted to get my hands on it. And there were a couple covers you could pick. One had this cover, which I didn't want. Uh, one had this cover, which seemed decent. Uh, one had the, the VHS cover, which I'm going to put in the the thumbnail in here. I thought there was. I, I know there's a. I think there's a few more. But uh, I like this cover. So, yeah, this is the limited edition Blu ray. I'm probably the only guy in America that has this. Hey, I'm fine with that. And this was the, the DVD cover. So it's cool that they added that in there. But yeah, I mean, no other features in that. And actually, overseas, you see that Lionsgate owns it, and maybe they own it here as well in the U.S., but they're not, again, they're not going to do anything with this. I, I would love to have heard Toby Hooper's interviewed about it. And Ted Levine. They'd probably be, you know, Toby Hooper may rest in peace. Ted Levine, he'd probably be embarrassed to talk about it because it's like a 4.0 on IMDb, and it's considered one of the worst movies ever. I mean, I've... If you think that good on you, man, but I could name you 50 movies. I sincerely enjoy this movie. I don't enjoy this in a so bad as good way. I sincerely enjoy this movie. I don't cringe at all, except again, some of the few performances, like the foreman guy or this actress, which again, maybe they were dubbed or something. <clears throat> but yeah, I love this movie. Though I was saying, I can name you. Crocodile from 1979, 1980. Have you seen that film? Give that film a look. Give Feeders and Feeders 2 a look. Give a Serbian film a look. Give Martyrs a look. Give Hobgoblins a look. Or Troll. Troll suck dick. Give Troll a look. Give fucking Mountaintop Motel Massacre. I'm sure my friend, one friend would say, Give Curse of the Blue Lights a look. Give Mangler 2 and Mangler Reborn a look. God, I could fucking go on. A lot of movies I rant on. Give those fucking pieces of shit a look. You want to talk about bad Stephen Dean adaptations? Give a look at Trucks. Or the fucking Shining miniseries. Or Storm of the Century. Or fucking... Give me what I want, I'll go away. Give me a blowjob and I'll shoot you in the face. How about that, motherfucker? I'm sure if you gave me a blowjob, you would go away. Because I shoot her all right in your eye. But yeah. 
I mean, Stephen King adaptations thinner, fuck thinner, and I even spit think of thinner. Be like thicker, as in my cock wrapped around your fucking neck, movie. I like Tom Holland, but not for thinner. Great, I'm watching 90 minutes of an asshole. I don't care if that was in the book. You're still an asshole, be an asshole. And I don't give a shit if you die, because you're a fucking jerk-off asshole. You should die in five minutes. Might take 90 minutes, you jerk-off. Oh, you're getting thinner? How about you die right now? Unlikable character, no reason? Well, at least Televine is likable. By the way, I'm going off tangent now. But, because every review you don't find with this, except maybe my friend Mike OCP, he didn't mind the film. I know my friend Effrey, he doesn't mind the film. They don't love it, but they don't mind it. But I saw this as a kid on VHS. I did have the VHS tape a long time ago. I don't think it was the uncut version VHS I had. I'm not sure if they made different versions of that on VHS. But, yeah, I, I love the Mangler. Robert England, I think, does a wonderful job. He's a lot of fun as his character. I think Tyler Levine, he's a great lead. Uh, I liked a lot of the bits of dialogue. Bullshit reality. Reality bullshit. This is bullshit, Mark. This is bullshit. I like Ted Levine's character. I love the production design of the Mangler itself. I like the, the dark, grungy, dirty feel. I like that it said, fuck anything. Let's go for it. So let's kill an old woman and crush her head. and She's just tear it out in a bucket after bucket. Now, if the character in Mr. Bucket, put my balls in your mouth, Mr. Bucket, if they put it in that, then that'd be a different movie. Uh, hell, The Mangler 2, that could have been about that. It would have been a better movie than The Mangler 2 we did yet. I'm going off tangent again. Yeah, I sincerely enjoy it. I think it's got some good gore. I love that it goes ape shit at the end. It makes it more fun. Fuck it, it'll make it grow legs and shoot fireballs out of his ass. Love it. You know, the store fits the film well. I I sincerely enjoy this movie. But hey, I don't care if I'm the only one. Because it's not going to change my mind. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.